Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another InfoSec Hub video. Today we're going to talk about intrusion detection system and intrusion prevention system. In the latest video I uh, talked about intrusion detection systems and that they're more of monitoring, uh, detecting um, intrusions. And the prevention system is really also based on the network, but in a prevention system can detect and act upon an intrusion. So say, for instance, uh, you have a source IP where the attacker comes from. He sends all his requests uh, through the trusted network, your network that's being monitored by the firewall and the IPS. And the IPS realizes that the trusted network is under attack. Then it can block the IP and it can block the port on which that attack is happening. So the difference between the IDS and an IPS, they're both basically working the same way. As you can see here, there's the switch. Here's the IPS, IDS, sorry. And here's the management system. Here you have the IPS and the IPS is sitting between the firewall and the switch. So here you have the firewall switch and on the side there is a IDS. So the IDS really monitors, monitors the switch um, and there's a connection between those two devices. Uh, the IPS is really um, in between all the network devices. So this one can also detect intrusions, but it can act upon it by closing down IP addresses and ports. And the IDS basically informs all the switches in the network what is the, the policy. And it has um, interactions with all the switches because it's about network traffic. And this can actively monitor all the information that flows through your network and then can act upon it when it's under attack. So that's the, that's the main difference between uh, the two. Detection on the one side and just for management purposes, IDS and an IPS can really act upon it. And when you have an IDS, um, intrusion detection and prevention, that, that's the whole package. So some companies only uh, employ an IDS just for management purposes, but when you want to take it one step further, you go to the IPS, which is really preventing, again, on the network level, IPs, um, protocols, um, attack pattern, so to speak, uh, because hackers always start with scanning ports, what's open, uh, what kind of servers are there, and when you have an open port, they try to log in using basic credentials, admin, admin, for instance, and try to log into the systems. And sometimes when you log into a system, the system already uh, shows you what kind of software is behind it. Sometimes it even goes as far to show you a versioning number of the software that runs on the server. And we all know software has vulnerabilities in it. And when there's a known vulnerability, then with that information, you can already try to uh, exploit the system if you so wish. Let's go a little bit further. I find this website. It's about um, the differences. They explain the differences between the IDS and the IPS. So let's go a little bit further. I suggest if you want to know more, you go through this, but it's about this network stuff that it's interesting. I will not go into too much detail, but you can also make a DMZ, uh, demilitarized zone. So that's really sitting between two firewalls. So you have two times an inspection of what's happening. Uh, on the one side from the, for the firewall for the trusted network, your local area network, and one that's coming from the internet. So then you really have a demilitarized zone standing in between firewalls. So all requests, either coming from the local network or from the internet, is being checked. And here you, you create this zone. Um, I will do a video on DMZ in the future as well. So here's the IDS indeed. There's an attacker, for instance, coming from the internet, going through the firewall because it presents itself as legitimate web traffic. Here you have the switch and the switch is for your local area network. There's an IDS connected to this switch. And here you have the management system. For instance, a security operations center has access to this management system just to check what's going on in the network. And when this all checks out, then you have access to the web server, mail server, all the trusted sources basically on the network. Um, 
This is purely for management purposes. So you know what's happening on the network and based on that information, you can beef up defenses, basically you can harden systems, stuff like this. But this is also on the network level. This is about network traffic. Now we go a little bit further to the IPS, something else. Here is a host intrusion detection system, maybe also something for a future video. But we're focusing in this video on IPS. So again, the attacker comes through the internet, goes to the firewall, has to go to the IPS. And here you can see clearly that it's a network device. Uh, it's not separate and, and checking on activity on the switch, but it's really first has to go to the IPS. And if the IPS detects here that this is an attack or it's something that's not kosher based on its rule set, it will close off the connection. So then the connection stops here on the IPS be before it's flowing to the network switch and onto the corporate network. So the difference being, I cannot uh, repeat this enough, IDS, purely informational detection system, logging what's happening on the network, and an IPS can act upon it. So when an IPS detects it's under attack or the network is under attack or they try to access the network, whatever you uh, want to call it, it can close down the connection. It can lock the IP address. And um, based on that, you can, you can adjust the firewall, for instance. So that's basically what I wanted to say. Um, so an IPS can also see and detect denial of service attacks. Those things happen. They can even be used by script kiddies. They fire up a tool and fire away lots of traffic at a, at a web server, for instance. They can, for instance, block port 80. So every request that goes to uh, the IPS, block 80, then if, an, if this attack happens, then the web server is probably not accessible anyway. So they can close down the connection on port 80, then nobody can access it. But when you have a very smart IPS, then it can detect exactly what kind of IP range this attack is coming from. And then they can block only that IP block, if you, if you know what I mean. Like this, this let's say 100,000 IP addresses that belong to the same block. They can be blocked and other traffic will flow through it. Um, this can be done with a number of ways it can detect what kind of client it's coming from. Because uh, a DDoS attack can be, um, can be fired away from a lot of endpoints that are infected, for instance. And if they all have the same kind of browser plugin that's infected, then it knows where to look for, for instance. Then the client will be similar if you catch my drift. And if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Um, again, it's it's IPS works on, on a lot of rules and attack patterns, so it can detect various types of exploits, worms and viruses as well, because either a worm and a virus uh, also has to connect to a command and control server. So that's also IP based and port based. Um, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to tell about tell you about. So real easy to remember. IPS is on the network level, and an IDS is more of a yeah, detection, and it, it connects to the switches here. So it reads what flows in, what goes out, and um, gives you more of an insight what's happening on your network. I hope this is clear. If not, leave me a comment below in the, in the comment section, and I'm happy to get back to you as soon as I can. Enjoy your week.